Hey everybody, Dan the Wolfman here, martial arts expert, MMA expert, and I'm glad all of you have enjoyed watching my two breakdown videos I did on Steven Seagal with Jesse and Oliver Encamp. I think I really get into higher level stuff you might want to pay attention to. I've trained, I don't know, 35, 6, 7 years, something at this point, something like that, and four black belts and fought pro MMA, and more importantly than all that, trained for over 20 years 20 years plus sparring and rolling hard with all the top MMA fighters from around the world. Uh, I have a combative and street jujitsu DVD. It's four and a half hours on BJJ fanatics and effective self-defense. 51% off right now. It's four and a half hours long. So take advantage of that now. Uh, highly rated eight reviews on one, all five star, 15 reviews on BJJ fanatics, five star, so I think you guys will definitely enjoy the lifetime of experience, not only in martial arts and competing and going with top guys, but I've balanced and worked armed security off and on for like 27 years. So a lifetime of real world experience. I give uh, quite a few, like 16 or so real world stories, different levels of force needed, multiple attackers, weapons, uh, et cetera. And some, you know, I haven't told. So anyway, guys, today I want to break down Rokas Leonovicius, the martial arts guy, or that former Aikido guy, Aikido, Aikido guy, um, his second MMA fight. And more importantly, what I want to get to is things like the bigger picture of how YouTube is basically a circle jerk of all these guys that don't know what they're talking about going, oh, rah, 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 your footwork and punches were so good. And everyone, just because you have subscribers doesn't mean you're good and doesn't mean your opinion matters. Because after five years of training, uh, supposedly in MMA, or four years, uh, you should be way, way better than that. And I'm going to technically break down what he did good, what he did bad. Um, just watch some of my fights from the first five years of my MMA training. Like Rokas, I um, came from particular, mostly a Taekwondo background. Now, I did dabble a little bit with Judo and, and Aikido and, and stuff for a couple years before my hardcore uh, MMA BJJ catch wrestling training uh, kicked in uh, January 97. But my my fights were within the first five years of my training. So you can see what I look like just eight months in, what I look like a year and a half in, what I look like three years in, what I look like five years in. This is all early footage except the self-defense footage here um, from uh, Combat Jiu-Jitsu. But even this competition here was 2002, tapping out 310 pounds, Scary Jerry. This was uh, armbar in my third MMA match, uh, just a year and a half of training against a heavier, more experienced opponent, triangle choke five years, under five years in, in a grappling match versus a wrestler in a bar. Um, so, you know, I come from the old school and nowadays everyone's going rah, rah, rah here versus Jason Mayhem Miller from Bully Beatdown. Everyone's rah, 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 Siskumba. Oh, it's okay to lose. Oh, you look so great. Even when he didn't look great. OK, and it's not about the losing so much. It's about did you perform to the level that you should? Were you technically proficient to what five years of training should to what a blue belt in jujitsu should be? But then again, he bought his blue belt in just six months in a special program. So um, what he does good, I always say good. What he makes good videos, I always say good. He's now deleted, it seems, our last uh, interview where he asked me to be hard on him and I was hard on him because you know I guess the flower child of today can't really handle it even though he's in his 30s and his followers you know you know the type of people nowadays that just uh, can't handle it but you know I'm fighting I did lose but I lost to three of the most experienced fighters in the world at the time when I fought them or now they're still three of the top like six most experienced fighters in the world something like that whether you rated them when I fought them or even now. So that's that's a fight just a year and a half in, you know, and I won by an armbar very quickly. Three first round submission victories. So you can look at my early stuff. Let's get down 
into uh, here's my second fight. So you see what my second fight looked like with just Taekwondo, but just a little bit more, and then we're going to go into it. See that sliding side kick to the leg back in 1997, sliding side kick to the chest, 97. Back then, the holds barred, no one thought you could even kick above the belt. So I'm making my Taekwondo McDojo skills applicable. Am I not? Kick punch lands there on this wrestler. Front kick to the chin years before Anderson Silva and Seagal was doing the front kick. And Leota Machida, front kick under the chin, makes him fall forward, guillotine, and win yet again by first round submission i have another video in 2000 here's some daito juco highlights um you know look at that straight blast there here's a cradle hook crazy cradle to heel hook catch wrestling submission i did there uh anyway guys now let's get into breaking down rokus's shortest mma fight yet i.e the second mma fight that he lost in a row uh, and I thought he did pretty well in his first fight, but after supposedly five years of training with one year off, which is what he says in the beginning of the video, if this was my student and I have coached and been around amateur, I've coached amateur fighters, pro fighters, I've been around pro fighters, I've sparred and trained and been on the professional fight teams all around the world, this would not be an acceptable performance to even one of my students. After kind of like one year, I'd be very disappointed. If they had trained like six months with someone else and six months with me, my students did better. Um, than Rokas does after five years. So why does someone that wasn't very good in martial arts and still isn't very good in martial arts for what they're claiming gets to decide what's good, what art's good, prove to me it works, and all that is really ridiculous. Let's look at the fight. We're going to watch it in half speed to break it down. And so his commentary, uh, you can watch his version. 1-1-2, one, one, two. the 2 wasn't very straight, but it, it kind of the first jab was a fake paw. But I do say start a fight with one one two seven eight. Um, which he's probably watched my new striking videos, my cluster fighting system, and he did take the center there. He claims that's a check. No, he got kicked in the back of the knee. That wasn't a check. His low kick there was good. So he started good with punches, not the best punch, not the most powerful punches, and he got stupid idiots like Icy Mike, self-trained kickboxing instructors that never trained with anyone good, claiming, oh, great footwork and great punches. Definitely not great footwork and definitely not powerful punches. He eats another low kick there. He was pawing with a front kick with his weight on his back. That's more because he's really just trained kickboxing for six months and hasn't been doing his, his jujitsu, uh, you know, steadily. He wasn't training MMA steadily. Kickboxing plus some jujitsu does not equal MMA. MMA, it's not the 90s anymore. MMA is its own thing trained together. A um, couple punches there. Again, he's kind of a weak puncher, but he's just a weak puncher. Um, he would need to know how to ground better and kinetic cohesion uh, between his muscle groups and have a strong spine, which he never had. After 13 to 15 years, he claims 14, 13, 15 at different times of Aikido. Um, and, you know, here we go. Bad kicking um, off balance. Uh, and then he starts using the kickboxing stance again with his weight on his back leg. That's not good for MMA. Again, glory kickboxing is not MMA. So when you only go train kickboxing and you don't go back into MMA training and jiu-jitsu like I even suggested he did and he hasn't replied. Now, he did do a nice little rolling elbow block, bong sawish type of action, rolling elbow block here, which I teach in my 52 series. Um, that was good. Now, he should be doing a hard cover, more instead training cover elbow back, cover 2-3-2 two, two back, cover 3-2 back. He doesn't even have that. But here, this is good in that he rolls it. Now, he breaks his structure too much. Coming up here is a right punch from his opponent. Right here, I freeze frame that. Look at his connection. So he rolled it off well, and he rolled the punch with his head. I don't like giving bending over that much isn't very good. But again, amateur second fight, okay. But, I mean, that sets you up to get left high kick, left knee right away, left hook right away. But he did, you know, like Anderson Silva did, kind of that rolling elbow block with the front lead. You can look up um, lead uh, rolling elbow block at 52, and you'll find my video on that. So in a way that was good and something you don't see all the time. You're seeing more hangers and elbow blocks, as I stated in my video in MMA. Um, his footwork is horrible. He's circling constantly, as you see here, to the power hand. You circle away from the power hand in MMA. Very few instances do you circle when you're not an open stance, your same lead. They're both orthodox. Left lead forward, power hand, right hand back. You do not circle to the power hand. You would only circle to the power hand if you had a really great jab, which he doesn't. He throws it out there, but it's not like a powerful shotgun jab, double jab, triple jab. If you have longer reach than him, you have a better jab, 
or you're, you're mostly you're fighting an opponent that particularly has a strong left hook like Paul Daly. Very, most people have a stronger right rear hand or right hand. You don't do that. If you're in open stance, you could circle that way with a greater distance of Maya control and draw them in to my Leo to Machida style techniques that I do and I teach. Okay, but usually, no. I see Mike goes, oh, you have great footwork and great punches. That shows you that all these guys are fake YouTubers. They don't know anything, and it's the circle jerk. They're like, rah, rah, it's okay, Rokas. No, 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 no. If this was my fighter, this is definitely not okay. And you attach to certain people, like Oliver's had probably one week and one day with them. Well, it's not Oliver's fault either. Nor is it two months of SBG's fault, though. Then again, the rear naked choke defense. But, oh, I just opened a can of worms. Okay, so a blue belt should have, have better... We'll, we'll, we'll get to the punchline later. Okay, so he's throwing jabs and then a little bit of long hooks, and they're okay-ish. Again, he's circling the wrong way. Almost got hit with the right hand. He did get a forearm block up into that. That's not bad. He's giving ground. That's not good. He's giving ground and kind of moving left. That's not good. Gets nailed with a jab there. Punches miss there. Bad kicking distance. He threw a kick, a left middle kick. Number one, you probably shouldn't be th throwing too many middle round kicks in MMA. You definitely don't throw them weak leg just by leaning back style, Muay Thai kickboxing style there. You would throw it with serious intentions to destroy that liver or with a m little switch on the balls of your feet. You don't just throw it there and get counter punched within punching distance, especially MMA is a greater distance than kickboxing. This is bad MMA. This is not five years of training MMA. Okay, let's look at that. Yet again, a very crappy kick again. The front teeps originally were okay, but then he was keeping the weight on the back leg. That's no good. He got hit with the right hand there. Kind of bonks out. A high elbow rolled that off. Not really bonks out. He didn't jump, but a high elbow roll more uh, Sistema style. Uh, he lands a left punch there. That's not bad. He's throwing a lot of lead punches. That's pretty good. I mean, they're not the strongest, but that's not pretty good. Does he get nailed with that right hand? Barely. Missed, kind of got clipped a little bit with that right hand, perhaps. And he's circling the wrong way yet again. And yes, that is the wrong way, unless you're a very high-level boxer doing it for very specific reasons, or high-level karate-style fighter, or things of that nature. And there we go again. He gets countered with a punch yet again when he throws a left middle kick with no setup. So let's look at that, because you don't want to make these mistakes. And I would be mad at a one-year fighter making these mistakes and <laughs> very mad at a five-year fighter making these mistakes. Okay, so you see he's kicking within punch distance. He gets nailed, you know, with no setup. He's throwing a naked kick with no setup, and it's a body kick, and it's not at the proper maya. It's not at the proper distance. It looks like he was setting up a front leg front kick, teep kick there again. And, you, and then he goes for a single leg, a head outside single leg. Why are you going for a head outside single leg? Are you listening to very bad purple belts in China, like Ramsey Dewey? Because in MMA, who's hitting a good head outside single leg? Other than Daniel Cormier, who is now retired, who had the power and the body built low and wide to get high crotches off the fence, why are you doing a head outside single where you can get high elbow guillotine, you can get pushed flying knee, you could get cross faced, you can I can do a back slap and break structure, high level stuff that I teach. It's not a very good technique. And and right before that, again, just not awesome, okay ish, but not what I would expect. At five years in the training, I was a Tim. You know, team punishment, T to War T's, the champion of the world. Would that be acceptable? No. A couple years later than that, I'm at Militich's fighting system in Iowa, training with killers. Would that be acceptable? No. So he tries to chain pull it, but his head's on the outside. You chain pull with your head on the inside, looking up into the ribs with pressure on the leg and, and the floating rib, basically. And now let's look at this. So he's dancing around, driving the cage. And now the, the left arm is fully around his neck like a V-choke. However, we still see his butt and we still see his back. Is that a choke? No, I am one of the very few. Not only do I have four black belts, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, but also a black belt under uh, Gokoshevichin and Judo Jean LaBelle. There's only like three to five in the world, okay? I know a thing or two about grappling after 25, I don't know, a lot of years, okay? 
95, a little bit of judo, 97, jiu-jitsu, catch wrestling, starting MMA. Okay, so all he had to do was bring his left elbow back. He's doing two hands here instead of left elbow back. Again, he's do still, where are his two hands? Here. I guess that's the uh, SBG defense to go, meh, 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 meh. I don't know, some of you will get that joke. No, you turn in and use angles of attack. And now you don't just give the guy the angle, you weave your left elbow back. Oh my God, I'm getting choked, so what? Put your chin down and breathe and fight the position. Certainly a real blue belt would know how to do that. Certainly someone after five years of MMA training should know to do that. So the bigger issue isn't even him losing. And the fact no one cares, he's getting very view, few views compared to his opinions. Why do you care about his opinions if he's no good at martial arts? That just doesn't make sense. Okay, people are illogical. And um, these people like, oh, do all the other YouTubers jock riding is just because he has followers, not because he's any good. This is no good. And they think it's good and they don't break it down. Or they think it's okay. Or they think it's wrongly good footwork when it's horrible footwork because they were self-trained. They didn't train in Thailand like I did. They didn't train with Lupini Stadium champions like Santian Noe, like Métis Jidepec or Tongboy Dragonleg, like Hafel um, uh, Codero, uh, like Benny the Jet. They didn't train with real top people. They weren't dedicated. In fact, they're so undedicated, they take a year off or do kickboxing twice a week, and yet we're still supposed to believe they're good at jiu-jitsu. I already did a Chadi versus Rokas breakdown, and that's when I thought he was doing bad against a black belt in Chadi, but Chadi is only a brown belt. That's not good, okay? It's not good. So he should be right, making sure the second hand doesn't come up Left chin down at this point, down to the uh, chin down of the left shoulder. Maybe the right hand could be there, but the left elbow should be pushing back. Okay, he could be plucking, pulling down, pushing up a little bit, depending. You got to really feel it. Uh, but mostly you're looking to peel the second hand. You don't worry about the hand around your neck. You worry about body rotation. You're turning it, whether it's whatever kind of choke. Okay. So let's continue here. At this point, you can see the fear in his eyes. His neck was snatched, and he is no longer in the fight. In fact, when he realized the guy was kind of skilled and big, he mentally wasn't there. And if you don't have the mentality, you're not a fighter. And people can lose. But it, it, if he lost and he did all the right defenses and he did the right footwork, that would be one thing. So here's this bad outside single again, and you really shouldn't. I just never taught it. You look at my six takedowns and throws drill, one of the most popular takedown videos on YouTube that's not just pure wrestling related, but jiu-jitsu MMA related. So there, he lets his arm get deep around his neck. And now he's just meh, 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 and he's giving this guy, letting him turn, get his back, almost letting him get that hook in. And all he had to do is spin his left elbow in. Where's your tenkin, boy? Where's all that Aikido? You just had to turn in. Where's your circular Aikido? He didn't turn in. Here he did roll. There's some Atemi. Here's some Atemi. Look at that. Look at this. So he should have already turned in. He should know to turn in. He's not turning in. He's not putting the left elbow in. He's not facing his opponent. If you had just a little bit of wrestling training, you should know that. Uh, and, but he does kind of kick his legs up and rear roll there. That's kind of, you know, Aikido. There we go. That's kind of Aikido right here. Look at this. I'm going to give him credit for this. Oh, he kicks back so the hooks don't get in. And he kind of floats his hips off to the side. And now he's turtle. Freeze frame. Boom. Turtle. Immediately turtle. What do you do? You hear Oliver and Cap, who is cornering him. I like Oliver a lot. Oliver, I think, has had all of one week, and now met probably one or two days with him. So any technical deficiencies really are in Oliver's fault. But when someone doesn't train with authority, they don't train with dedication, they're not really on a martial art journey, they're on a YouTube-making money journey. Very different things. And then everyone goes, oh, you're so great, when it's not great. No, it's so great to lose, when it's not great to lose. And it's definitely not great to lose by not doing right if you lose because the guy is so much better that's fine if you're performing to where you should be performing so right now he should be tripoding up he should kick up on his feet and put his butt up high in the air and shake 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 like a dog that needs to pee if you can you can then get him up a little high enough you can quickly let go of the choke defense and pull the head and yank him over the top so 349 let's see how long this is here just like the three seconds he didn't swallow at all when chadi went in for the katagruma three seconds no reactions we're at three seconds, four seconds. We're not tripoded yet. There's a little mule kick, but the hook wasn't in, so there's no reason for it. He hasn't tripoded up yet, and he just flops on his side. That's eight seconds of very poor defense. Flopping on the side can be okay defense if you were there, but he should have already tripoded up, kept his base, and shook him off because that would be the best chance of defending the choke early. 
He does lift his left leg up here. That kind of blocked the hook right there. That's good. Okay, he should keep him that left elbow down to help block the hook. He, he's kind of using his leg and he's long leg and he's got the knee up high. Almost gets the hook in there, blocks it with his knee. That's good. I can't see what he's doing with his hands. I think he's mostly just here instead of worrying about a second hand and chin down and shrugging and just, okay, you're choked. But as long as I rotate my body and defeat the square back to his front chest, as long as I can keep angles or, you know, better yet, pull the guy over the top which here he was back on turtle. Again, he should have kept widened his base, lowered his base, gotten a good base here. Look how high the guy is. After five years and a blue belt, you should know this. Again, he's not claiming he's a white belt in jiu-jitsu. He's not claiming he's only had six months of MMA training at this point. He's claiming five years with one year off. And he claims anywhere for 13, 14, or 15, depending on the video of Aki, though. Okay, and so here he's back on. So I would lower my base like a, a second first, Feel where his hips are. I'm like, oh, my God, he's high in my back. He's dingling. His cup is way in the middle of my back, not even on my lower back at this point. So then I would jump up, tripod up, head down, and you shake, 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 and you pull him over the top like a ponsunagi, a short shoulder throw, or, you know, sometimes defend, 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 <gasps> and pull the head over the top because look how high the guy is. You wouldn't want to go to your side here. And he flops to his side because he wants to give up at this point. I don't know. I think it's only a couple seconds here until he taps. Still blocking the hooks. And so we got a choke with no hooks. A choke with no hooks. Is a choke a choke with no hooks? Usually not. Depends where the body weight is. Body weight riding control. If you're really an expert, but that's not what we're talking here, you can. But usually not. Okay. I, I did commentate. You know, yes, I'm a professional MMA guy. I did commentate. Pancrase live on UFC Fight Pass. So I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so here. Now the choke's kind of in. And instead, is he peeling the second hand? No, he's totally letting go to tap. So let's look at the ending there from that perspective. So all he's worried about is the, the attacking arm. And that is a decent V choke because the guy has long arms right, on both sides of the artery. So it kind of is, right? But let's see. As he comes to camera here, is he already reaching back two hands on one? Forget about this. Shrugging does all that action. Shrugging does all that action. This should be released to go two on one and peel off the second hand, which he does not. So we saw no rear naked choke defense. As soon as a half choke, even not facing him, was in, there was no squaring up to the opponent. Just weave that left elbow back and square up to your opponent. There was none of that. There was no tripoding up. And then if a hook's in, then you can mule kick one back and one back and try and clear and you play that game. And you still try to get them over the top. None of that. That would not be acceptable to anyone I gave a blue belt to. Of course, I don't give blue belts for money in six months. So what do I know? Um, he does throw hands even though they're not strong. He did a lot of punches in his first fight. He did better in his first fight. I commended him a lot of that, not in the grappling department, but in the punching a lot department. Uh, doesn't have a lot of power, horrible kicks, bad distance, doing kickboxing in, MM, in MMA instead of doing MMA in MMA, and thinking a little bit of jujitsu where I did six months and then occasionally a few classes is good enough to claim he did MMA training for five years and he took a year off and he just did kickboxing for a while. That is not dedication. That is not a true martial arts journey. If you look at what I did, I was moving around the world to train with the best instructors possible, and I was training three to five hours a day, usually four at two different places, or five. Yes, literally, two hours of jiu-jitsu, two-hour drive to Dan Severin, two, two and a half hours, usually two and a half hours with Dan Severin. That's four and a half hours that day. And then maybe another day, it would be at least three hours of training, sometimes two hours of jiu-jitsu again, and then Muay Thai, JKD, um, Shudo, jiu-jitsu at night. So three to five hours a day, at least four days a week, often, uh, you know, a Friday off and then a Saturday daytime or morning training would be in there as well. You have to be dedicated in MMA to claim your MMA or you're just trying to get views on YouTube. So you might want to find out more. Look at my examples of how all the fraud martial art YouTubers suck. Look at the comments. Look at the uh, dick riding. Uh, just because someone has followers doesn't mean you should be like, rah, rah, sis, kumbaya. It's okay to suck. And he is the master of getting all the followers of the modern world that, you know, have their feelings hurt all the time and get offended all the time. That's what I have a problem with. Oh, it's okay to suck. Oh, it's okay to lose. Well, it's kind of okay to lose. It's kind of not okay to lose. It's okay to lose if the other guy you were fighting was so much better. 
and you performed very well and maybe only made one mistake for a couple milliseconds. Okay. I had already won three fights. Watch, watch my, uh, my Dan the Wolfman MMA Kudo grappling highlight reel. All the fight footage there is really within the first five years in comparison. You could look at what my second fight look in just, um, and then my lost 2000 fight. You can see what those look like. I take the guy down instantly, mount him, and then hit him, and then let's watch the finish here. This is three years in. Okay. And then I'm going to, within like a minute, 34 seconds or something, here's the top wrist lock for the tap. So there's a difference between actually going on a martial arts journey, owning a real journey, or just trying to make YouTube money. Anyway, guys, I'm Dan the Wolfman. I, I know you think that's all jaded or whatever, but when you see the comments and all the other YouTubers like, oh, your footwork's great. No, I see, Mike, it's really not. It's obviously you did some Kempo and then bought some gloves and you don't know how to kick. You don't know how to move. You don't know how to check properly. You don't know how to do anything properly. You don't know how to coach properly. And when you have amateurs come in, the amateurs are way better than you. Okay? And then you got someone else that often teaches something wrong from Shanghai China. And some stuff okay. And some stuff is entertaining. If you just want entertainment, fine. But then why do their opinions on this sucks, that sucks, this martial arts no good, blah, blah, blah. Their opinions don't matter because they have no knowledge. They have no self-knowledge. Where they sit is where they stand, and they stand as a, a, a white belt in jiu-jitsu, Mike and Seth, a, a, a bought blue belt in jiu-jitsu, or a bad purple belt. They're not black belts. They're not pro MMA fighters. My losses were to three of the top most experienced fighters in the world and against guys kind of my level with a more experience Three, you know, three wins by submission, first round submission, showing actual good technique. Oh, I can elbow escape, get back to guard. Oh, I could guillotine. Oh, I can top wrist lock. Oh, I can arm bar upside down. Like, you have to be able to show the good technique. There was no showing good jujitsu skill there. There was so so punching with bad footwork and bad kicking at the wrong distance for MMA. Anyway, guys, I'm Dan the Wolfman. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Check out my two Steven Seagal and Jesse Engkamp reaction videos. I don't mean to be negative all the time, but he took down the video and he's not responding to me all the time anyway. But it is what it is. What you do good is good, and what's bad is bad, and what's shite is shite. And most of the YouTubers are shite. And if you want to see more of that, you can see my videos of the examples of how all the fraud martial art YouTubers suck. I give some more examples. All right, take care, everybody. And check out my competitive Street Jiu-Jitsu DVD on BJJ Fanatics. Now when it's 51% off, four and a half hours, years of bouncing, real world experience, armed security experience, traveling the world experience, training with the best MMA fighters and coaches experience. That's a real journey.